This week on The Reckless Pursuit, we're kicking off a three-week series on a string of questions that we've been asked recently that kind of all go together. And we'll talk about all three of them in just a second to kick this thing off, but the first one is this. What is church? Works for me. Hey everyone, you're watching or listening to The Reckless Pursuit. My name is Cody. And my name is Elaine. And today we are answering the question, what is church? We've received a couple, to be honest, this is our question. I asked this very question because we were asked two questions back to back that I think uh, are really cool to talk about, but this is one we've got to talk about before we can get to those. And the questions that we were asked, and we'll do them exactly, we don't have to pull it up right now, but in, in essence, it is what makes healthy leadership in a church and what are uh, green flags for a church? And so I think those are both fantastic questions. We talk a lot about red flags. We talk a lot about what not to look for. But, uh, you know, I think it's good to talk about the positives as well. What is a good church leadership? You know, what is, uh, and that gets into the whole conversation of spiritual authority and like all that kind of weird, mucky stuff we don't like Titles. talking about. Yeah. <laughs> but I think the first thing that we need to discuss this week is what is church? Uh, I think that a lot of times, we don't talk about what church is enough. Uh, and we hear things in church like, oh, yeah, church is it's the people, you know, like the building is just a building. And that's cute and all. But then we go and we volunteer to like clean toilets and stuff. And like I'm not saying there's anything wrong with cleaning toilets. I like clean toilets. But all I'm saying is like we oftentimes hear it said that it's the people, but we don't actually realize it's the people. And so I, I just want to take, and this will be a really short introduction episode, but to you, Elaine, what is church? Essentially, church is where people come together and talk about God and what God is doing in their life. And they may read the Bible mm -hmm. that may look like worship. Uh, I guess it's all worship, really. But um, yeah, just reading the Bible and coming together. And just discussing, again, like what's going on in their lives or how different scriptures speak to them. Like healthy so discussion, I guess. You touched on something that I think church is because I don't necessarily believe church is coming together to read the Bible or to sing worship only. Uh, but you said talking about their lives. I think church is a culmination of spirit where like you're coming together to kind of like what the word colonia in the Bible, like a coming togetherness and interlocking together, doing life together, as so many churches like to say, right? Like, I think that it's important to distinguish, though, the difference between church and the church. Um, oftentimes, we we think of church and the first image that comes into our mind is like, here are the church, here are its people, like mm -hmm. open the door, or here's, here's the church, people. here's the people, yeah, open the doors, here's all the people. Uh, and like we think of it as the building in the in the the body, the embodiment of coming together under this roof, right? But church is what we're doing right now. You and I are having church, uh, and then you know you guys watching and listening and participating in this are having church, uh, inevitably even talking about it, even in this short episode. And to me, uh, we we often talk about how like oh yeah, church is the people, of course it's the people, but we don't really let that sink in. And a lot of times uh, with people who go through deconstruction and even into reconstruction, we view the embodiment of the church as church. It's kind of like we've done an episode before the difference in church hurt and God mm -hmm. hurt, right? Uh, like way back when. Uh, yeah. I don't remember what episode, episode number that was. Yeah. But there is a very big difference in church hurt and God hurt. There's a big difference in church and the church, right? And we also did an episode about what isn't community. And I feel like those kind of tie mm -hmm. into that because essentially the church is a community. Right. And so I just, I wanted to lay the foundation here before we talk about leadership before, and these are going to be some relatively heavy subjects because I have a lot to say about some of these things. Uh, but I want to, I want to lay the groundwork, the foundation saying church is coming together and fellowshipping life. It is coming together with your heartache and your struggle and saying, I need help in this area. It is coming together with your joys and saying, I'm celebrating this moment. It is coming together saying, I feel like I am having some spiritual warfare. Or it is coming together and saying, I don't know what I believe. It is coming together and saying, like, and welcoming and embracing and sharing the love of Christ with each other. 
uh, and having a joint experience. And I don't want to confuse when we're talking about church with the church, as in like the systemic organization, because that is, it calls itself church, but it's, I don't know, man. It's kind of like the difference in like a McDonald's chicken nugget and a Chick-fil-A chicken nugget. Like one's actually like whole chicken and one's like, like piece. I don't they know, both that's a taste terrible great. Analogy. They both that's taste a terrible great. <laughs> oh, I'm slacking on my analogies. But like one is, it's kind of like a term we have given something that is taking on an alternate meaning. What? I, I feel like you could distinguish church between a noun and a verb. Yeah, that's a good way of saying the it. The noun is, I guess, the place, right. church. And then the verb is the active, ongoing. Right, the difference of like, yeah. oh, it's Sunday morning, I'm going to go to church versus like, wow, we just all got together and we were up like way too late drinking coffee and conversation, like we were having church. So church is a verb, essentially. Right. And I think that it's important to like substantiate the difference there uh, in this, in the fact that like anything we're talking about this, unless otherwise distinctively like saying is when we discuss having church, which I think is vital to the faith, right? It is vital to our faith. Uh, no matter what you believe, church in, in its purest sense, community coming together, kononia is vital to um, our, our human life, our human existence, right? Like we're a social creation. We're, we're designed to, to be around each other. Uh, I think even, you know, coming through all that we've went through the last couple of years and everything, you can realize like uh, as much as it's fun to be away, like you need interaction with other humans. Like that's vital to our existence. Uh, it's vital. That is experiencing God. We've said in previous things, and like it's one of my favorite things to talk about is like the best way to see God is to look in the eyes of your fellow man. Like if we are the the body of Christ, you cannot see Christ outside of looking. Uh, you can't see Christ in a more entire sense without looking into the eyes and hearts of your fellow uh, human. And uh, I love what you just said is the verb of coming togetherness. Now, these next two conversations we're going to be touching on are more about institutional church and some distinctions along the way that have caused a bit of division in the way we perceive, uh, like, so the questions being posed, right, coming up are uh, green flags for a church and what to look for in, like, church leadership. Both of those are more alluding to the institution, mm -hmm. the noun version of church. There are green flags to looking for the verb church. And just to even touch on those, because I don't think that's what that episode encapsulates. Uh, it would be green flags would be, uh, I don't know, like safe places, like mm -hmm. people you can trust who aren't just going to go blabbing your information, who you can confide in, who you can trust spiritually to open up to that level. Uh, that would be a safe noun version of the church, right? Like that'd be a green flag, someone who is uh, deemed honorable, worthy, someone who exuberates the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. If you have someone that's a raging lunatic who is not loving or gentle or, you know, peaceful, like those are probably not a good example of like the verb church. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the next two episodes specifically are are for those who are either going to church for the first time or re-entering into church after taking a sabbatical or a mm -hmm. pause, going through deconstruction or whatever it was that made you leave the church or temporarily pause going to traditional church services. So the next two episodes would be really great for someone who is like, okay, I kind of want to go to a church, the mm -hmm. noun church. What should I look for? positively yeah and i think i want to kind of like wrap this little uh introduction up with saying that there is not a one is not bad these are not like opposites these are not yin and yang church versus the church noun versus verb they are different participles of the same thing right i said the right word i don't know if participles are right. anyway they're the, they're the natural extension of each other right like you can go to a church and experience church you can go to the supermarket and experience church too. But just because we have a designated place for that, uh, no matter your views or how you've been treated, like I understand, like been there, done that. Uh, I'm not saying that it's always the best example of the church or of, I'm even confusing myself now. It's not <laughs> the best example of the verb having church, right? But it, sometimes that community aspect can be pretty rough and sometimes it can be more empirish and stuff. We've discussed all that before. Basically, That's not the point. you can go to right. church and or you can have church right and one does not constitute yes. the other 
and they, they are, can't they live can in both tandem. Equally be good. So we're gonna discuss those things because honestly, I will go ahead and say this: the church now uh, can do a good job. Can do a good job of bringing people together and having community. I mean, social clubs are social clubs for a reason, right? And the church is a good social club. Like there's. Uh, there's a reason so many people that go through deconstruction go, I've lost my community. It happened have, to us. Like, this who do I have? Where do I turn? Podcast. Uh, and, and so I think that it does have its advantages. It, it can be advantageous, even if it's not necessarily th- having church in the verb sense to you necessarily. And and the last point to that, and then we have to wrap up this episode because we're supposed to keep keeping these short, is... It's not necessarily the church's job to have church, in my opinion. And the reason I say that is I don't think that we should ever turn, and this leads into our next conversation too, more more, but I don't think we should ever be turning to a single person to give us what Christ is like speaking to us. And like, uh, I know churches would get weary and say, oh, there's so much danger in that. But all I'm saying is, I don't think that it's the church's job to... Co- I think too much of what the church is doing is trying to cultivate this weird atmosphere where it's like everyone can have church, but sometimes just coming together in that is church to you, and so in- inadvertently they created church by trying to create church a different way and end up making church for you. I will say disclaimer. The reason that we are going to a more Q&A style is because these are questions that we're asking ourselves. And again, we don't have the answer or all the answers or whatever. And this is an ongoing conversation with you, the listener, the watcher. And the watcher. Yes, the all along the We are style. having this conversation with you together. And if you are listening to this episode and you're like, oh, I don't actually agree with what we're saying that is completely fine this is a conversation yeah speaking of conversations uh get on my announcer voice uh if you would ever so kindly go and ask your own questions we have plenty of avenues for that we have a tiktok channel uh at the reckless pursuit uh we're on instagram underscore trp podcast and of course you can find us on facebook with nomads a safe community for christians who ask unsafe questions kind of like this one Yes, and that's over on Facebook where we're we're uh, kind of kindling that fire all over again after our, our sabbatical. Uh, and so, and of, well, I guess the last thing I'll say to this is you are probably listening to this because most people are podcast uh, listeners here on this, this forum, but we also are putting the videos out there. I'm not going to say they're the most exciting thing because it's literally just us sitting here talking. You get to see my hand movements a little bit more. And the pretty more. purple lights. They're blue. Anyway, so if you prefer to watch, you can find this on YouTube and Instagram, correct? Is that where we're putting these out at? YouTube and Instagram. So, uh, yeah, next part two, we will be discussing, which one are we doing first? Uh, I guess we should do green flags for a church and then do leadership after that. So next week, we'll be talking about uh, green flags for finding a healthy noun church. Uh, Yeah, be brave. Be bold. And be reckless. We'll We'll talk talk soon. soon.